Hi guys, today we're going to be changing this kitchen sink basket strainer right here. I'm going to start by showing you three different styles of strainer and the way to connect each. And then we'll disconnect the drainage underneath here, back off this nut and replace this strainer. Here are three different models of kitchen basket strainers. A plastic one and two stainless steel models. All three are designed for a standard three and a half inch sink opening and a one and a half inch tailpiece. This particular basket strainer uses a bolt to secure everything together, which passes through the top of the strainer. The top flange is sealed with a foam gasket and the rubber washer and pressure cup is installed from underneath the sink. I'm using my hand here to represent the sink. The tailpiece can come in different lengths and can be cut to length if needed using a copper tubing cutter. There's a nylon gasket which is installed between the tailpiece and the bottom of the strainer. Install the gasket so that it rests inside the tailpiece. The next strainer uses a slightly different mounting method. Instead of the bolt that passes through the center, it uses a large lock nut. The underside is secured with a thick rubber washer followed by a friction ring. The friction ring is usually made of cardboard or plastic and then the top side is sealed with plumber's putty. Roll the putty into a section roughly half inch thick, then wrap it around the underside of the flange, pressing it in as you go. This will be more than enough putty, but the excess will just squeeze out when securing it to the sink. This section with the plumber's putty would be installed from the top of the sink and the rubber washer, friction ring and lock nut would secure everything together from the bottom. The tailpiece goes together the same way as the previous one did. The final example is a strainer that uses a thin washer to seal the top and a pressure cup and lock nut to connect everything together from the bottom. The purpose of the tailpiece is to allow the drainage to be connected to the strainer. In this example, I'm using an inch and a half trap adapter to connect my inch and a half ABS tubing to the strainer. All right, now we can get into it. First things first is to disconnect the drainage. Place down a towel and a pail under the P-trap to catch any water. This setup has two trap adapters and one union P-trap to loosen off to be able to remove the drainage. I'm stuffing the drain with a plastic bag so I don't have to breathe any sewer gases that might come back up while I work. Next is removing the tailpiece with a set of adjustable pliers. With the tailpiece now out of the way, the strainer's lock nut can be loosened off. If you find the whole assembly is spinning, use a set of needle nose pliers from the top to back up the assembly and stop it from spinning. Before installing the new strainer, make sure that the opening is clean and dry. I'll be installing the model with the washer and friction ring for the underside and plumber's putty for the top. Okay. 
You can use silicone caulking in place of plumber's putty, but this makes servicing down the road a lot more difficult. Center within the drain and firmly press down. Install the rubber washer followed by the friction ring and lock nut. Tighten the lock nut with a set of adjustable pliers and again, if the whole assembly is spinning, use needle nose pliers to back it up. Clean up any excess plumber's putty. It doesn't have to look perfect at this stage as it can be cleaned with running water once the drain is hooked up. Install the tailpiece remembering not to forget the plastic washer, then tighten. Reinstall the drainage in the reverse order of removal. Run the water and check for leaks at all your connections. I personally fill the sink at least halfway, then drain to ensure everything is leak free. Well guys, thanks for watching and like always if this video helped you out, liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time.